That day, a cold rain had been coming down since nighttime. When I got the news that she had run away from home, I rushed to meet with her. When I told her how honestly felt, she cried and tried to tell me something, but... Watch out! Suddenly, ignoring the traffic light, a truck came approaching right where she was. Ah! Out! My body moved automatically, but a strong shock ran through the back of my head. While being half conscious, someone was shouting something. I couldn't hear well and couldn't see the face either. And then, I passed out. When I woke up, I was lying on the hospital bed. I couldn't understand why I was at the hospital, why I had hurt my head. My memory was blurry and I couldn't remember. Tori, are you right? Mom. You were almost hit by a truck yesterday. Don't you remember? No, I don't remember. I see. But I'm really glad Mizuki-chan contacted me. Mizuki-chan? Huh? Mizuki Hiroki. You were with her yesterday. Who's that? According to the doctor at the hospital, it seems that I was partially missing my memory. I seemed to have forgotten about Mizuki Hiragi, who my mom had mentioned. You're just an ordinary school kid. You don't have a girlfriend, and you've never been popular. I kind of noticed that, but you don't have to say it that clear. This could be a temporary symptom, so let's recuperate at home for a while and see how it goes. Since the wound wasn't that deep, I was able to go home the next day. I'm home. I do remember myself and my family, but I had forgotten about some relationships and some stuff that has happened in the past. From elementary school to before I woke up in the hospital, I hardly remember anything except about my family. It's a strange feeling. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a delivery. It's alright, Mom. I'll get it. Yes. Uh huh. When I opened the door, there stood Stranger, a girl dressed as a maid. Doriku. I mean, welcome home, Master. Um, isn't welcome home my line? By the way, who are you? I'm Mizuki Hiragi, the girl you saved. To return the favor, I decided to live with you started from today. I only understand that her name is Mizuki, and that she is an acquaintance of mine that my mother had mentioned yesterday. Alright, thanks for having me. I'll be coming in now. Wait, hold on a sec. What do you mean you're going to live with us? It literally means I'm living with you, master. To return the favor of you saving me, I'm going to take care of your surroundings for a week. This is happening all too fast that my mind is not keeping up. I'm sorry, but I lost my memory and I had forgotten about you. Yes, I'm aware. That's why I came here to help. Oh my god, Mizuki-chan, you're so cute. To tell you the truth, I have to leave tonight on a business trip abroad, and I won't be back for a week. Is it okay if I rely on you? Of course, mother. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't decide everything between you two. What? Don't tell me. Are you blushing? No, it's not that. It's weird for a guy and girl to be suddenly alone together. Oh, it's not weird at all. You guys been together ever since you were kids. I think you'd feel safer with her around too. Alright, I'll be stopping by the office before I go on the business trip. Mizuki-chan, please take good care of him. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Uh, hey, wait up. My mom said what she wanted to say, 
and ran off to work like the wind. I didn't know what to do, but I decided to welcome her, and for the time being. Master, are you hungry? If you still haven't had a lot, I'll make something for you. Huh? Um, yeah, I still haven't ate. With those words, she started cooking in the kitchen. I guess Mizuki-san's good at cooking. Here you are! What is this? It's fried rice. The fried rice I know is not black and it also doesn't smell this sour. But she went through all the trouble to make it for me. She'd be sad if I didn't eat. Thanks for the food. <coughs> No, nothing wrong. It's so good. I might just go to heaven. You really do look like you're going to heaven. Her cooking had an indescribable taste and to be honest, it tastes horrible. From this cooking incident, we got a glimpse of how low Mizuki's level of housework was. Washing a machine is full of bees! You didn't put them in the laundry net, so it ripped! One time, when she washed the cushion in the washing machine, the fabric ripped and the beads came out, causing the washing machine to break down. Why do I press to stop this vacuum cleaner? The red button! Wait, that's my magazine! I don't remember what that is, but... I know they're important, so don't rip any more than they already are. Oh my god, it's all torn. I'm sorry. And the other time, when she tried vacuuming, she accidentally ripped my magazines in my room which I had stored carefully. Master, please rest over here. Like, I can't rest like this. You don't have to hesitate. I'm not. It's embarrassing! And another time, she would suddenly ask me to rest on her lap. I was just all confused by the sudden start of cohabitation. Music san was doing her best, but everything was just not working out. I was able to go back to school from the next day, and so we headed to school together. I found out that we went to the same school. We were in the same class for talking with Mizuki san. And it turns out that even at school, she's planning to take care of me. Honestly, I'm worried. I'm happy we get to walk to school together. Yeah, yeah. And so, why do you talk to me like I'm your boss? We've been friends since we were kids, right? Oh yeah, you're right. I should only be using polite words when I'm wearing the maid outfit. You don't have to use polite words even when you're wearing the maid costume, you know. Uh, really? I always imagined the maids using polite words. It's more weird having someone who's the same age as you talk to you so politely. You're right about that. Alright, I'll talk normal at home too. Hmm? music son, walk on this side. I'll call you Mizuki from now on. Yes! That's Yoshida-kun, and that's Tanabe-san. When we arrived at school, Mizuki taught me the names of my classmates before homeroom started. Everyone in the class also worried about how I lost my memories, and so I was a little tied up. If Mizuki hadn't been there, I would have probably panicked, not being able to explain myself. Even after homeroom, Mizuki carefully showed me about what we learned in the class and what the test would cover. 
At first, I was worried, but thanks to Mizuki, I had no problem getting by in class. Kaori-kun, you can lay on my lap. I told you, I don't need the kind of treatment. No, no, I'm not going to give up until you come here. That night, Mizuki was being stubborn about making me lay on her lap. At first, I kept on refusing, but... Her will was so strong that I gave up and decided to put my head on her lap. This is embarrassing, but Mizuki's lap is soft and warm. Kaori-kun, thanks for today. Uh-huh. It's me that needs to be thanking you. No, I need to. You protected me on our way to school. Mizuki stroked my head and I was embarrassed, but at the same time, it was kind of nostalgic and I felt relaxed. This warms. I felt this before. I think I was sleeping on someone's lap like this before. It's no use. I'm this close to remembering, but it gets foggy every time I get to the point I really want to remember. I feel like I've lost memory of something really important. I feel embarrassed when you stare at me like that. Oh, um, I'm sorry. So, Mizuki, why do you go through all the trouble to help me out? That's because I made a promise. A promise? Yes, I'm trying my best so I can fulfill that promise. Is it a promise that you made with me? Yes, but I don't want to wait on you, so don't worry about it. I hear you, but can you at least tell me what kind of promise it is? I can't tell you now, because it's my fault you lost your memory. Mizuki. When the accident happened, my mom told me Mizuki was beside me. And come to think of it, Mizuki did say yesterday that she wanted to return the favor. I wonder if it has something to do with the accident. You don't have to feel responsible for the accident, Mizuki. As you can see, I'm alive and you're helping me every day. But I am causing a lot of trouble. I feel like I'm always getting in the way. No, you're not. I don't think you're in my way. Okay, thanks for cheering me up. By the way, does your parents know that you're staying here? Well, yeah, kind of. Kind of? I've told them. Don't worry. Mizuki, who said that an angry expression on her face that I've never seen before. I was curious, but her reaction was so different than usual that I couldn't step into it further, and I ended up the conversation vaguely. And so Mizuki continued to do her best and take good care of me cooking, cleaning, and laundry. When she first came here, it full of failures, but as the days went by, she got used to it the work. And now she's gotten pretty good at it. She continued to support me at school too, and I've gotten used to being with her all day. At first, I felt tied up, but I gradually became used to this living arrangement and... But watching Mizuki do her best, I've noticed my emotions inside were changing little by little as well. With that being said, Mizuki's failure still continued. Tori-kun, promise me you won't look up! I won't! Just hurry and grab it! Just as you would expect from her, hard-working Mizuki continued on spinning her wheel. One week went by super fast. On the last night, I saw Mizuki folding laundry and absorbed and thought. I called her name so many times but sometimes she was completely spaced out which made me worry. The next day when I came home from school in the afternoon. Mizuki, it's been a week. You should be satisfied. We're going home. Mom! 
A stranger was standing in front of my house and when I thought she had called out Mizuki's name, she grabbed her arm. No, don't pull my arm! That's enough. You promised you come home yesterday. No, let me go! Both of you guys, calm down! Hey, wait up! Mizuki! Mizuki shook off the woman's arm and ran off. Since it happened all suddenly, I stood there stunned. Um, who are you? I'm Mizuki's mother. Oh, that's right. You don't remember me because you lost your memory. It turns out Mizuki's mom knows me too. Why are you here? To take Mizuki back home? Of course. The promised week should have ended yesterday. Ah, but yet she's running away from me. I don't have the time for this. Um, she seemed like didn't want to go back. Maybe she has her reasons. You probably don't remember, but this is a family's problem. I appreciate you saved my daughter's life, but could you not take any more irresponsible actions? Irresponsible actions? Never mind. I'll go look for Mizuki myself. It seemed like there was a lot more she wanted to say, but to me, Mizuki's mom looked kind of lonely. I felt like I would say things out of emotion, so I decided to endure and take priority in looking for Mizuki. I spotted Mizuki walking along the road, and so I ran to catch up to her. Mizuki, I'm glad I found you. Toriko. I'm sorry, I didn't run off like that. I was just surprised, that's all. Why all of a sudden? She's your mom, right? Yes, yeah, somewhat. What do you mean somewhat? Did something happen? Can you tell me what's going on? I want to help you. I'm actually going to be moving far away from this place pretty soon. What do you mean, far away? When I asked there where it was, it was somewhere pretty far from this place. It wasn't somewhere I could come back easily. But I don't want to move away. I want to stay here forever. But because of the situation my parents are in, they decided without me. And my mom is not thinking about me at all. At all? If she wasn't thinking of you at all, she wouldn't be coming all this way to get you. No. What she's worried about is not me. It's about the moving time and how people look at her. I don't think so, but if you promised, you have to keep it. I don't want to! It's not about what you want and what you don't want. Don't you think you're being too selfish? Selfish? Is what I'm saying selfish? My only wish is to stay here forever. And you think that's selfish? I'm just saying. If you promised your mom, then you have to keep it. She's worried about you too. If it's so important to keep promises, then you should keep your promise you made with me, too! P what promise? I never made a promise. And what I remembered then was about the other day when I was laying on Mizuki's lap and how she was talking about a promise. Never mind! Hey, wait up! Mizuki! Ah! Ouch! My body automatically moved to save Mizuki. I think I've hit my head somewhere from the impact, but before I felt the pain, I felt something burst in front of me. It felt like when I was wide awake and all my memories came flashing back at once. That's right. That night, Mizuki came over to talk about her parents' divorce and how she was going to move far away and how she was feeling unloved. A lot of things piled up so Mizuki ran away from home and that night, I ran to meet up with her. 
and after I made a promise with her, a truck approached her from behind. I jumped in to save her without thinking, and next thing I knew, I was sleeping in the hospital bed. I remembered everything. Kun! Tori Kun! Me. Zuki. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I made you save my life again. Mizuki, I'm sorry. I remembered everything. I'm really sorry. I had forgotten about it. Toriko, you remembered? You got your memories back? I got my memories back. I remembered everything. Even the promise I made with you. I'm the one who said it. If you don't want to move away, come to my house. Yes, when you told me, I was so happy. I felt like I wasn't alone in all of this. That's why even when you lost your memory, I wanted you to like me again. I thought if I worked hard and returned the favor and wear made the costumes that you like and help out a lot, you'd make the same promise with me again. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry. I forgot it. You must have felt lonely. <laughs> and for a while, Mizuki continued crying on my chest. As though a dam had bursted, everything that had been piled up inside of her came flowing out. And she cried like a kid. I thought it was adorable how Mizuki had been working hard all this time by herself. And also at the same time, I felt really bad. And I kept holding her in my arms. After a while, when she had calmed down, I gently squeezed Mizuki's hand. You don't have to work that hard. I will never leave you. I'll protect you, I promise. So, come to my place. Okay, I will. I'll be beside you forever. I'm never leaving your side. I caused you a lot of trouble, but I hope we can keep staying together. With those words, Mizuki smiled and it felt like it was the brightest smile I've ever seen her wear. When we both got back to my house, Mizuki's mom and my mom was sitting in the living room. It turns out that my mom who got back from her business trip had invited Mizuki's mom, who was waiting in front of the house inside. The air was heavy, but I tried to open my mouth to explain the situation, but Mizuki stopped me and said she wanted to speak from her mouth and started talking first. I don't want to move away. I really don't want my environment to be destroyed because of you and your dad. But I don't want to leave your side either, mom. I don't hate you. I love you. And that's why I want to be loved by you. I'm sorry for being so selfish, but I don't wish for a luxurious life. So I want to keep living here with you, mom. Mom, please. Mizuki, I'm sorry I hadn't been able to accept your feelings at all. I'm sorry too. But please don't ever forget this. Not once in my life did I ever feel that you didn't matter to me. I've always loved you. And no matter what happens, I'll always love you. I do feel bad about the divorce, but I would never make you feel sad because of it. About moving? Let's think a little bit about it together. Mom! Thank you! Mizuki-chan and Tori, you too, listen carefully. Moms love their kids so much. Since we love them so much, sometimes we have to be hard on them. We are human beings as well. We do make mistakes, and we are still learning as moms. But there are no parents 
who do not love their children. At least, I'm sure Mizuki-chan's mom loves you. And Tori, I love you too. Mom. Yes, right now, I feel very loved. The atmosphere felt sad, but at the same time, it felt really warm as well. All four of us cried, made eye contact, and smiled. We repeated those things and gradually shortened the distance between the family. And while we were at it, Mizuki and I both held hands with each other and confirmed each other's existence. Mizuki would sometimes squeeze my hand hard, and to answer that, I would squeeze back too. What I could feel from her hands was the warmth of happiness. And so a week went on by, and one morning... Here you go, Toriko! My special fried rice made with love! Eat up! Thanks for cooking for me. So, is it good? Yeah, it's good. The rice is light and fluffy, and it's just the right amount of salt. And I can also taste the ingredients very well. But having fried rice in the morning is kind of heavy on my stomach. Ahaha, I guess you're right. Well, but you're happy that you can eat my delicious cooking, right? Well, I won't deny it. Hehe. <laughs> oh, you're so honest. Our maid who lacks some common sense like serving fried rice for breakfast is also my precious love now. Since she had moved into an apartment next to my house, she's been helping around the house on behalf of my busy mother. Most of the time it's just the two of us, so I guess you can say we're practically living together. At night, she lets me sleep on her lap like this, and I lie here relaxed like this every day. Toriko, you've always liked to relax like this. Huh? <laughs> really? Hmm, it's too long ago. I can't quite remember. Yeah, yeah, have it your way. What's with that line? Maids are supposed to be more polite to their masters. There you go, talking about maids again. Listen to me. Mizuki is now able to laugh, and I can be myself more around Mizuki. I was surprised when she first came to my house in a maid outfit, but as a result of living together, we were able to obtain happiness. For this happiness to never end, and for Mizuki to never have to leave my side again. I would like to continue being Mizuki's emotional support.